is make sure that we got a consistent color. In this particular case, it's pink. And we don't want any white in it. No marbly effect like what you see right now. So it's got to be mixed up really well, really thoroughly. So if you don't get it mixed as well as it should be, what happens? You get areas, little uh, parts of the mold and everything that will never set up. And you'll have a gooey mess when you're trying to use your mold. Yeah. So, when I ever tried to do this, it was not the easiest thing to tell. So, what do you just keep mixing it a little bit longer than you think it actually maybe is done? When I'm or? when I'm teaching people to do this, I tell them when they got it all mixed and they got a consistent color and everything looks good to them, mix it a little bit more. Okay. It's just it seems to always have. A little spot somewhere, a little area in there that didn't get mixed in real good. I can see when you're cleaning off the stir stick that some of it's still white. Yeah. So you're putting the white part back in there, so you got to mix it again to make sure that gets in there too, right? Right. And we got to make sure that you scrape the sides. And I'm turning it over like this, that's what I'm doing. I'm scraping the sides to make sure that I get all the white off of the sides and well incorporated into the rest of the mix. And also at the bottom. And the reason I keep scraping the stick is because there's always some white against the stick. Because this stuff is so thick, it doesn't flow. And it doesn't mix together unless you're actually mixing it. So that's why I got to do that. Uh, so just pouring it in, it doesn't dissolve into it you have to right. mix you, it you got to okay. mix it in now, um how thick is this as far as how much it looks like you're working hard to mix it uh is that because it's so thick it's it is because it's so thick and it's somewhere between the consistency of molasses and peanut butter <laughs> oh it is really thick so it's tough to get everything incorporated and you got a lot of time to work with this um i'm going to say probably half hour 45 minutes or something like that so you're not in any hurry here anyway so it's it's always good to even like i said earlier when you get it uh well mixed mix it some more just to be for sure like i said you got the time and it's well worth the effort to do. So if you don't have a lot of muscles, um, would you say maybe mix a small amount and don't mix a large amount until you actually can that's feel always, comfortable with it? That's always good. This is a small amount right here. Uh, I have actually mixed where as much as a gallon of it or something, and that's a whole lot harder and takes a whole lot longer time to do. When you get that larger amount, do you mix it by hand also? I do. You can mix it with a, a paint mixer on the end of a drill. Uh, the only problem is whatever mixture that you're using, you got to get it cleaned off really well because the uh, silicone will want to set up all around on the blades of the mixer and it's uh, very difficult to get off after the stuff, well, before and after that it sets up so it's not a good idea to use a paint mixer because they're so hard to clean okay I believe that I have this mixed up sufficiently let's check and looks good to me <laughs> look see all the bubbles in there yeah those bubbles we do not want okay go away bubbles Oh, they're not going away. In order to get rid of the bubbles, we have to do what they call degas, which is oh. put them in the vacuum chamber and vacuum the bubbles out of it. A vacuum chamber, okay. 